Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida, and I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. The men and women of the United States intelligence community and our armed forces dedicate their lives to protecting our nation and its people. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Adherence to the rule of law is a bedrock principle of the Department of Justice, and our nation's commitment to the rule of law sets an example for the world. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. Applying those laws, collecting facts, that's what determines the outcome of an investigation. Nothing more and nothing less. The prosecutors in my office are among the most talented and experienced in the Department of Justice. They have investigated this case hewing to the highest ethical standards, and they will continue to do so as this case proceeds. It's very important for me to note that the defendants in this case must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. To that end, my office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. We very much look forward to presenting our case to a jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. In conclusion, I would like to thank the dedicated public servants of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, with whom my office is conducting this investigation and who work tirelessly every day upholding the rule of law in our country. I'm deeply proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Thank you very much. That was Special Counsel Jack Smith delivering a statement on the indictment of former President Donald Trump. Jack Smith, of course, uh, is investigating President Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents. He spoke today on the recently unsealed indictment saying that we have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. Oh yeah. It is going down. A lot of folks had uh, thoughts on this second indictment of former President Trump. I saw folks commenting online, oh, this doesn't mean anything, doesn't mean anything. Uh, and um, yet here we are. So uh, Trump's been giving his live updates on the uh, uh, charges of mishandling documents. Mishandling them, uh, these these documents these classified documents at his Florida estate. The indictment marks the first time in U.S. history that a former president faces criminal charges by the federal government, the federal government that he once oversaw. Trump faces the possibility of prison if convicted. Oh, yeah, it's serious. See, before... When Trump was getting away with things, it was civil cases, cases against his corporation, against his university, right? This is different. This is totally different. But because he had been getting away with things for so long, for so long, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this indictment alleges that his valet moved boxes at Trump's direction. The indictment alleges that at his direction, 
He moved approximately 64 boxes, 64 boxes of documents from Mar-a-Lago storage room to the former president's residence. The actions occurred between May 23rd, 2022, and June 2nd, 2022, according to the indictment. The total includes approximately 30 boxes. 30 boxes. Now, this is the same day that Trump's legal team was expected to examine the cachet. The valet's actions that day came hours after he talked briefly via phone with Trump, prosecutors allege. Neither Trump nor his valet, according to the indictment, disclosed to the former president's attorneys that the valet moved any of the storage room contents. According to the prosecutor's timeline, Trump met later that day with one of his attorneys and the valet escorted the attorney to the storage room for his review of the documents. Republicans, this is the person that you this is the person that you had representing your party, the GOP. Some of them are going to still line up to defend this criminal. Some see the light, finally. Some were never Trumpers and saw the light from the beginning. But let's continue. The indictment, which was unsealed today, outlined two circumstances in which Trump allegedly showed the documents to others. Oh, so many crimes. And he talks about Biden and 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 Pence and the way that they handled the documents or were treated totally different. This is a totally different situation. America was run by a criminal for four years. Let's continue. One occurred in a meeting with his writer at his uh, Trump National Golf Club in New Jersey, Bedminster, where he described federal officials' plans of attack against him and purportedly acknowledged that he knew the information is still a secret. In a later meeting with a representative from his political action committee, Trump displayed a classified map related to a military operation, acknowledging He should not be showing it to the representative and that the representative should not get too close, prosecutors said. In the next paragraph, prosecutors note how Trump at a press conference while president in 2017 addressed media leaks and said that leaking classified information is an illegal process that people involved should be ashamed of themselves. Talk about shame. Talk about what other people should or should not do. When you really think about the hypocrisy, when you really think about the hypocrisy that we are describing, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. Hypocrisy is unbelievable. Now, I don't know why folks are still defending Donald Trump and his actions. Donald Trump faces a string of inquiries in various states and venues as he campaigns to return to the White House. Now, we have talked about this, but this point has got to be hammered down. Trump's case differs from those other politicians known to have been in possession of classified documents. It's a little bit different. When you are leaving the White House, it is chaotic. Taking boxes, and as we have described in the uh, Pence situation, in the Biden situation, 
documents were taken that should not have been taken. And in those instances, when it is found out, the National Archives lets them know there's apologies. They allow them to come take the documents that should not have been taken. The president, uh, former President Trump has frequently described frequently described the Presidential Records Act as something that allows him to take the documents. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. This, the, the Presidential Records Act is something that allows the National Archives to get, to get the documents. <laughs> Not for him to keep them. Oh, he's so slow. He is so slow. Anyway, uh, let us continue. So the special counsel who's probing Trump's role in the retention of the classified documents and the efforts to overturn the 2020 election, he has been quiet, but he spoke today. Spoke today about the law, spoke today about a number of things. Now, in spite of these legal woes, a crowded Republican field, Trump has remained the front runner for the GOP nomination for 2024. This indictment stands to damage Trump with the voters. But even combined, all of the folks that are running against Trump don't have enough to overtake him. Even with all of this, Trump will win the nomination. But understand, this is what Biden and Democrats want. They want Trump to win. Trump thinks, or, or Republicans think that Trump is, is, not the choice of the Democratic Party. They want a matchup between Biden and Trump. Because Biden's going to beat Trump like he beat him before. Folks don't understand this. Yes, if Trump goes to jail, he could still become the president. But he's not going to beat Biden. He's going to get less votes this time than he did the last time. And yes, this is going to uh, uh, really rot, rev up, really get some Republicans engaged that were already excited. So, so they were really excited about Trump. Now they're going to be super excited. But you don't understand. He needs more people. It's not about how loud the 30% that, that support him are. This has to be a game of addition. Not subtraction. Trump is facing 37 felony charges related to the mishandling of classified documents. So the indictment was unsealed today, and it also alleges that he described a Pentagon plan of attack. This is the guy who you don't want to be your standard bearer. Unbelievable. The indictment now public charging former President Donald Trump with mishandling classified documents. It's been unsealed. And Trump disclosed the existence of the indictment in a truth social post last night in a video that he recorded. Very sadly, we're a nation in decline. And yet they go after a popular president, a president that got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country, by far, and did much better the second time in the election than the first. And they go after him on a boxes hoax, just like the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, and all of the others. This has been going on for seven years. They can't stop because it's election interference at the highest level. There's never been anything like what's happened I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. 
uh, they had the Mueller hoax, the Mueller report, and that came out. No collusion after two and a half years that was set up by Hillary Clinton and Democrats. But this is what they do. This is what they do so well. If they would devote their energies to honesty and integrity, it would be a lot better for our country. They could do a lot better. They could do a lot of great things. But when you look at what's happened to our country in the last three years, we were energy independent. We had a strong military that wasn't woke. We were doing so well. We were respected all over the world. We got the biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation cuts in history. And what do you do? You have a president where an election was taken, got more votes than any sitting president in history by far, never anything even close. And they come after me because now we're leading in the polls again by a lot against Biden and against the Republicans by a lot. But we're leading against Biden by a lot, a tremendous amount. And we went up to a level that they figured the way they're going to stop us is by using what's called warfare. And that's what it is. This is warfare for the law. And we can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Our country is going to hell. And they come after Donald Trump, weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI. We can't let this continue to go on because it's ripping our country to shreds. We have such big problems, and this shouldn't be one of them. It's a hoax. The whole thing is a hoax. Just like Russia, 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 just like the fake dossier was a hoax. So as you can see, Trump, one of those folks who always is the victim. Everything's always against him. Despite the fact that he has everything going for him. He's been handed everything. The Republican presidential candidates like Pence, Nikki Haley, criticize the indictment. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Campaigning as candidate in New Hampshire, former Trump flunky Mike Pence said that he's deeply troubled to see Trump's indictment because he believes it will further divide the nation. Idiot. Trump is one of the main factors of the division. And so the so-called law and order party thinks that the way to stop the division, to close the, the, the gaping hole in the middle of the country is by allowing Donald Trump to truly, truly continue with his lawlessness? That is Mike Pence's answer? This is the person that picked up his water bottle when Trump picked up his water bottle and put his water bottle down when Trump put his water bottle down. Mike Pence has no backbone, no spine, no pigment. He said that it's important for us to remember that no one knows the facts in this case. And as Americans, it's essential to remember that you're innocent until proven guilty. Okay, yeah, all that's true. All that's true. But that doesn't mean that we should not go on and and, and hold this American, Donald Trump, accountable. He can have his day in court. He called on the attorney general to make the uh, indictment public. You need to stand up and explain to us why this is necessary before the sun sets today. (laughs) Mike Pence is such a clown. Nikki Haley, one of Pence's rivals for the GOP nomination, said in a statement that Americans are exhausted by (laughs) prosecutors. Like, what is she talking about? Prosecutorial overreach, she said. Overreach? Are you kidding me? These flunkies of Trump. uh, It's unbelievable. Haley says that this is not how justice should be pursued in our country. It's time to move beyond the endless drama and distractions. One of the biggest mistakes that a Republican made 
in the last 50 years was when then-President Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon for his crimes. He gave people this sense that presidents and former presidents are above the law, which they are not, and we are going to see that. That is going to be tested. We have seen a lot of presidents get away with things. There have been a lot of criminals in the White House other than Donald Trump. So for Donald Trump to be the biggest criminal to ever have been elected president, that's saying something. Because we have had a lot of criminals in that office. There's been a lot of criminal activity in that office. Trump is the biggest one, the biggest crook, the biggest criminal. And as I said, there have been some criminals there. So the Trump appointed judge who sparked criticism initially gets the indictment case. (laughs) This federal case against Trump has been initially assigned to a judge he appointed who faced criticism over her decision to grant the former president's request for an independent arbiter to review documents obtained during the FBI search of his Florida estate. Yes, it's getting even more confusing. So a person familiar with the matter says that the case has been assigned to Judge Eileen Cannon, a former federal prosecutor who was nominated to the bench in 2020 and sits in Fort Pierce. The move seems uh, like it is a bit of good news for Trump, at least given the rulings last year that Cannon issued in his favor in opposition to the Justice Department. Cannon's profile obviously was thrown into the national spotlight when she issued what many legal experts saw as an extraordinary decision to approve a so-called special master to review the documents seized by the FBI. Some experts said that the judge gave undue deference to the former president and put a hold on some Justice Department investigative work unnecessarily. Now, as part of that case, Cannon temporarily barred federal agents and prosecutors from reviewing a batch of classified documents seized during the search. Her order was ultimately thrown out by the federal appeals court, which found that she overstepped. Of course, Republicans had nothing to say about that. The federal appeals court ended the independent review of the documents. Oh, yeah, this this thing is going and going and going. So we have Trump crying victim. We have Jack Smith stepping out and into the front of the nation and laying down what his team is looking at, what motivates his team. Trump kept classified documents in Mar-a-Lago's bathroom and a ballroom, the indictment says. This is crazy. This is crazy. Now, I don't think that his status, his standing with Republican voters are are, are going to be affected at all. I don't. And I think that that's fine. Republicans, go ahead. Make Donald Trump the Republican nominee, by all means, do it. Biden versus Trump, Biden's going to win that. Biden's going to win that. You know it, and I know it. Right? So this indictment, first time ever in U.S. history that a former president faces criminal charges by the federal government. So the Secret Service, U.S. Secret Service, is preparing for Trump's appearance 
at federal court in Miami on Tuesday. The grand jury has indicted him on 37 felony counts related to his handling of these documents. So you remember the arraignment in April in the New York case where he uh, pled not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records that attracted a, a whole bunch of media protesters involved multiple street closures and extra security screenings and shut down non-Trump court business for the afternoon. And it's going to probably be the same thing in Miami on Tuesday. The law applies to everyone. Trump special counsel says. Jack Smith spoke to reporters briefly in D.C. today. He did not take any questions. Did not take any questions. He said the prosecutors would seek a speedy trial and very much look forward to presenting their case. Very much look forward. This is not Mueller. He is totally different than Mueller. He's younger. He seems like he has his ducks in a row. Seems like he has his ducks in a row. Kept classified documents in the bathroom and the shower. Also in the bedroom, office, storeroom, ballroom. Prosecutors note uh, note that tens of thousands of members and guests visited the active social club of Mar-a-Lago between the end of Trump's presidency in January 2021 through the August 2022 search. They argued that, nonetheless, Trump stored documents in a bathroom, a ballroom, and a shower, plus an office space, plus his bedroom and a storage room. The indictment also claims that for a two-month period, some of Trump's boxes were stored in one of Mar-a-Lago's ballrooms, like a gilded kind of ballroom. Picture included in the indictment shows boxes stacked in rows on the ballroom's stage. The indictment also showed photographs of boxes that spilled over in a storage room including a document marked secret. I mean, the information releasable only to members of the Intelligence Alliance of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom, and the United States. In the photograph, the classified document is redacted. Lawyer said Trump suggested he remove damaging documents. The indictment unsealed today also says that unaware of any records being moved, Trump's attorney in June of last year identified 38 documents with classified markings and placed them in a folder, which he sealed with clear duct tape handed to him by Trump's valet. The valet then took the attorney to see the former president. Did you find anything? Is it bad? Is it good? The lawyer said Trump asked. The attorney told federal authorities that he discussed the folder of classified material with Trump and how the material should be handled. The attorney told authorities that as they discussed the attorney taking the materials with him, Trump gestured in a way that suggested he wanted the attorney to identify anything really bad and, you know, pluck it out. The lawyer clarified that Trump did not articulate such instructions beyond making that plucking motion. The attorney told authorities that he did not take anything out of the folder and that he instead immediately uh, contacted the FBI and another Trump attorney. On June 3rd, according to the indictment, the second Trump attorney acted as the official custodian of records on Trump's behalf and turned the material to the FBI. 
The indictment alleges that the valet moved boxes at Trump's direction. The indictment alleges that the valet acted and moved approximately 64 boxes within a few weeks. According to the prosecutor's timeline, Trump met later with one of his attorneys and the valet escorted him to the storage room. Uh, This was a fiasco. This was a fiasco. So you have Trump facing 37 felony charges for a gang of things. And, you know, it it is... uh, It is a lot going on. The White House, President Biden, have been quiet on this indictment. Pence thinks that Trump should stay in the presidential race. I hope that he stays in the presidential race. Now, of course, Joe Biden can't talk about this stuff. Now, understand this. The president, President Biden, did not put Donald Trump in this situation. Merrick Garland did not put Donald Trump in this situation. Jack Smith did not put Donald Trump in this situation. Donald Trump's own actions, Donald Trump's own actions have put him in this situation. It is his fault. Traveling to North Carolina today, Biden said of Garland shortly after the indictment against Trump was unsealed and released to the public, I have not spoken to him at all. I'm not going to speak to him. The president added, I have no comment on what happened and repeated similar replies when pressed. Trump, of course, is the early front runner in the Republican presidential primary for the right to challenge Biden. Biden, of course, seeking re-election. At least one of Trump's rivals, meanwhile, doesn't think the case should prompt the former president to bow out the race. Of course, his flunky Pence says he should stay in the race. Sure, sure. Say what you mean and mean what you say, Mike Pence. What a joke Mike Pence is. Mike Pence is definitely a joke. So this thing has has really heated up. Tuesday of next week is going to really, really be a movie. You you remember the last time back in April they were show, they were showing his his car coming from the courthouse and all you know. I hope they don't take it to that extreme. Uh, but we're definitely going to be talking about this, the uh, presidential race, Trump's. Standing in the race, I don't think is going to change. What Trump has definitely been doing is asking supporters to send him more money. Give me money. Give me money. He needs more money, he says. Supposed to be so rich, but he is definitely, he is definitely taking money from, uh, from his supporters. All right, let's do this. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back with more of the show. You are listening to the Don McKay Show here at On Fire TV. Uh, anywhere you get your podcast, just search the Don McKay Show. Stay tuned. There's more to come after this. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Don McKay in here, of course, the Don McKay Show on fire-tv.com, on fire-tv.com. Of course, anywhere you get your podcast, just search The Diamond K Show. So in Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, a ride-share company will let you hire an armed driver. This story coming out of Dunwoody, Georgia. So this new ride-share company, which is based in Dunwoody, allows riders to hire an armed driver to get them to their destination. The owner of Black Wolf, Carrie King Brown, told Candace McCowan that the idea for the company came from 
uh, talking to a friend's daughter or taking a friend's daughter to school about six months ago. After just one month on the market, Black Wolf has already been downloaded over 90,000 times. So uh, King Brown is a professional bodyguard who spent years working for celebrities and politicians. He says that at... end of last year, he had the idea to make uh, security accessible for everyone. We have clients from politicians uh, and uh, everyday blue-collar workers who need this service. So, of course, uh, there have been countless shootings involving ride sharers in the last year. You remember the woman who was ambushed and killed while in an Uber last month. King Brown says that he took note of all the violent incidents involving rideshare drivers and their customers and wanted to make a change. Our drivers, our military, law enforcement, those who have been in private security for over five years, that's the minimum that we require. They can see a situation brewing before it even happens, he says. And all the drivers are trained in de-escalation techniques. So far, King Brown says they have not had any incidents where a driver had to pull out the weapon, uh, but they have it. He said that the demand is far greater than what he anticipated. We're probably doing over 180 rides, and this is our first complete month, he says. Now we're here, we're expanding, next stop is L.A. Of course, critics say that this service just puts more guns on the streets. King Brown says that these are guns in the hands of highly trained professionals. We want to take the pressure off of you, take the liability off of you as the rider. The average ride with Black Wolf costs similar to an Uber Black, so about 50% more than the typical ride share. So you have this ride share and you have an, an armed guard with you. I mean, you know, it, it's sad, but that's that's the time that we live in. And of course, many times folks need armed security to get them to their cars and such. So you have this armed ride share and it's going to cost you more than what you normally pay for a ride. Uh, but uh, according to them, they would get you there safe and sound. Uh, do this, this to the Davey K Show on Fire-TV.com. Of course, I am here weekdays, 6 p.m. on Fire-TV.com. On all social media, I'm at the Diamond K Show. Do this, take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of the show after this. Thank you for tuning in to On Fire TV. We are a 24-hour independent news and entertainment channel. We produce original movies, documentaries, reality-based shows, and podcasts. On Fire TV is made possible because of viewer and listener support. Go to onfire-tv.com to become an On Fire Plus member. Your dollars and your support have kept us going, and we are just getting started. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your man, Dominic K in here. Of course, the Dominic K show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. 50 Cent says that stars lowballed him for power. He only got 17,000 per episode. So what exactly does 50 Cent do on power? Is he the writer? No. Is he the actor? No. But anyway. He has been calling out stars for the way the company has treated him. You remember they rejected the NFL Power Broker series that he uh, was involved with. He also noted that he hated that he did any shows for them, saying that he has no plans to make any spinoffs for the popular BMF series. Now, in an interview with Vulture, 50 Cent revealed that stars lowballed him on what he was paid. And um, he called, you know, what what they did lowballing. 
per episode for his culture shifting show power. 50 spoke about being passed up by numerous companies like Hulu, HBO, Paramount, and Showtime, saying, we went to all of these organizations in the early stages. They probably had something else they felt was similar or wasn't what they were looking for. I'm sure now they wish they didn't pass. TV showrunner noted that he was able to catch stars ahead of their uh, rise as a platform. So he got on board early. They gave Power a shot. With the success of the series, the rapper was also met with issues from the network he faced and he publicly addressed. You know how he does. Uh, And then every two years, it felt like we were auditioning for a major carrier. It's time to renegotiate, and it would be an issue. So for me, at that point, really what it is is racism, said 50 Cent. The rapper then noted that he was getting a lot of money in the music world, but took a massive cut in his pay to pursue creating power. There's no one that could come and tell me to take 17000 to act and executive produce and make music. I gave them the theme for power. Okay. I gave them things that connected, hopefully in a different way. Okay. You see what I'm saying? He says, all of those things for 17000 per episode, I get paid more to go to a nightclub and wave. His desire to make the show so bad found him justifying the low ball from the network at the time. So you often hear about folks talking about they make more money outside of the music business. Here in this situation, 50 Cent is revealing that he actually could make more in music. So why didn't you? Why did you choose to continue down this path? Because you see a bigger You see a bigger opportunity here. Now, you might be in business with the wrong network, but rest assured, there's more money in the TV game. There's more money in that film game than it is in music. So him revealing this, is he helping or hurting his case? Time will tell. Power is connected to stars. He can't disentangle that. Everything that 50 has been a part of as far as in this movie thing has not been a hit and and everything is not going to be a hit. I definitely think that he should do some business with some other networks. Hopefully that is what he has in in store. Hopefully. Um, But, uh, you know, 50 Cent has always been a controversial figure in music. And uh, I know that he's going to bounce from this smarter, bigger, better, stronger. Tune into the Dominic K Show here on Fire TV. On Fire TV.com is where you go to support what we do here. We are an independent 24 hour, seven days a week streaming network. Now, of course, you can watch our content for free, but we need your support. We need you to become a member or make a donation to the On Fire TV network, the Diamond K Show, and support all that we do here. OnFire-TV.com slash join. You want to become an advertiser, sponsor an episode of my show or any of the other programs that we have here. OnFire-TV.com slash advertise. Let's do this. Take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of the show after this. Thank you at home for joining me. Your man Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K show. So a Maryland funeral director has been charged in a fatal graveside shooting. Uh, The funeral company manager uh, shooting and killing a pallbearer. According to reports, this, uh, I mean, this is just a, A crazy, crazy story. But Wilson Chavis, 48 years old, allegedly shot and killed 30 
year old Ronald Stephen Banks of Washington, D.C. earlier this week. Uh, he was a, a pallbearer. And this a bullet grazed another woman during the memorial service of a young girl. So Chavis allegedly confronted two unidentified people affiliated with another funeral company with which Chavis has a long-standing business dispute. As the barrier was about to begin about 1.20 p.m., that's when it all went down. Several funeral attendees came up upset with Chavis and confronted him over his behavior. Chavis fled the scene and was later apprehended after being pulled over on a traffic stop. As a result of the shooting, Chavis faces charges of first and second degree murder, attempted first and second degree murder, and related counts. What is the world coming to? Are you kidding me? Shooting at, at a funeral of the pallbearer? And you, you work for a funeral company? Yes, I mean, it's crazy. Crazy. What is going on? I just I just don't understand this. Funeral company manager charged in the fatal graveside shooting of a pallbearer. Wow. Speaking of shooting, Takeoff's mother has filed a lawsuit against the venue owners where the rapper was killed. So you remember this tragedy late last year. So the mother has filed the lawsuit in Harris County, Texas, earlier this week against the property owners and assorted LLCs associated with Houston's 810 Billards and Bowling. The lawsuit alleges that the defendants failed to provide proper security on the night of Takeoff's death. He was only 28 years old. Now, the lawsuit notes that the facility and premises were rented by a well-known music personality, the family of Rapalot CEO Jay Prince, and that there would be a gathering after hours, and there were potentially many artists, popular athletes, and public figures there. Despite these facts, defendants provided no screening mechanisms, no after-hour controls or security measures, and no enforcement of rules or industry standards to deter crime against their invitees, which included takeoff. The lawsuit continues. In fact, social media postings in advance of the party made it clear that not only basic security measures needed to be followed, but advanced planning and consideration should have been taken into account, which defendants were negligent in failing to do. The lawsuit continues, the defendants knew or should have known that a significant number of violent crimes were committed at the subject premises and in the surrounding areas, but failed to protect invitees like takeoff from the risks of violent crime. Moreover, in addition to prior crimes, the defendants uh, failed to take necessary and unique precautions due to the specific event and the attendees. Specifically, defendants knew that based on the nature of the party, celebrities would be more likely than not to uh, potentially be the targets of crime. Defendants did not represent proper security would be in place, which in fact, there was no security. This caused many people to come to the event without concern. There are a number of allegations of uh, negligence throughout the lawsuit, as you can see. And um, it is uh, it is it is sad that this is happening, sad that uh, that we are here. Uh, I'm not surprised at this lawsuit, not surprised one bit uh, based on what happened. I'm surprised that it actually has not come sooner, uh, but we're going to see what happens with this and we're going to continue to follow. I, I don't see how um, the family of takeoff are going to lose this suit.
So, um, other news, Khalees, who is, uh, you know, ex-wife and, and, and kid's mother of rapper Nas, Khalees had a uh, career as an entertainer herself. She's a singer. Reportedly, she's dating actor Bill Murray, the, the comedian actor, who is 72 years old. This kind of took me by surprise, for those wondering. Uh, there is a nearly 30-year difference between these two. Age ain't nothing but a number. Somebody said that. So the dating rumors were sparked after Murray was spotted at a recent show of Khaleesi's in a uh, uh, festival in South London. Sources say that the pair was also seen together at the same hotel and have been getting close for a while since first connecting back in America. A source told Page Six that they met up in the States before the uh, people in the industry began talking. Now are meeting up in London. They clearly hit it off, the source said. They are both seen at the same hotel. He's been to watch her perform several times before he went to the Mighty Hoopla, which is this festival in London. They have both uh, recently shared bereavements, losing spouses, and uh, maybe that is something that connects them. Whatever it is that has brought them together, and however unlikely it seems, they are both single and are having fun despite the fairly big age gap. So if these two can find love, uh, while I would not have put this couple together, you know, uh, if they have found love and they are happy, then it is all good. It is, it is all good. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. I am here weekdays, and um, you want to become an advertiser, a sponsor, or any of our programs like the Diamond K Show, you can just head on over to onfire-tv.com slash advertise. And uh, we will tell you how we can complete a 30 second commercial for you to promote your product, service, or event. And it will play on our daily shows. Additionally, we will design a social media flyer for you if needed. Post a flyer to our social media. Display your flyer on uh, our website, onfire tv.com, for the duration of your campaign. We also display info on screen down here while the host completes two live on air feeds during our programs. Additionally, we will post links and contact info pointing to your website, your social media page, and uh, put that in the show's description. Uh, so we have a lot of shows here. Like the Diamond K Show, Swap Radio, the Baltimore Lean Show, the No Filter Podcast, the Her Epiphany Podcast, of course, uh, I Want Luscious TV, the On Fire Mix Show, the His and Hers Show, the Business Spotlight, Jay Jackson Live in Atlanta Show, Just Talking Sports Podcast, and more shows to come. You want to get involved, you can uh, reach out, djdiamondk at gmail.com. Or just visit onfire-tv.com to get involved. Uh, as always, once you have a great weekend, I'm going to be back here on Monday. Of course, tomorrow, you can check out uh, the Baltimore Club show, On Fire Mix Show. I'm going to be spinning music. Uh, boom, boom. I'm going to be spinning some music. Uh, send me stuff. Uh, you can do that, djdiamondkgmail.com. Of course, always, 24 hours a day, on fire-tv.com. I will see you guys on Monday. Thank you for tuning in to On Fire TV. We are a 24-hour independent news and entertainment channel. We produce original movies, documentaries, reality-based shows, and podcasts. On Fire TV is made possible because of viewer and listener support. 
Go to onfire-tv.com to become an On Fire Plus member. Your dollars and your support have kept us going, and we are just getting started.